Orange Water and Sewer Authority, better known as OWASA, is Carborough Chapel Hill's not-for-profit public service agency delivering high-quality water, wastewater, and reclaimed water services. To do this, OWASA's dedicated team is tracking and treating the water from when it falls to the ground to when it's delivered to your tap. So here at Cane Creek Reservoir, you know, we're the storage facility. We're, we're, we're the raw water storage here. From here, the water enters the system at our intake structure here at the dam, and then from there it's pumped eight miles down to the water treatment plant in Carver. The other reservoir is University Lake. Cane Creek is about three times larger and holds approximately three billion gallons of water. Our primary role here is to lay eyes on the system. Somebody from here at the lakes is going to be here every day to make sure that the pumps are running, which is kind of, the, as I tell people, it's the heartbeat of the company. The way the intake is, it, it runs from obviously the surface all the way to the bottom of the lake. It's about 50 foot deep there. And so all the way down the water column, there's the ability to draw water from different levels. And so it's a section series of pipes that's all the way down the, on, on the sides of the uh, actual intake structure. And so with a series of gates and valves, they can open up and close depending on where the lab tells them that the best water is coming from. The water here at Cane Creek might be better or worse on any given day than the water at University Lake. So they're constantly working out a mix to where University Lake might be 25% and Cane Creek might be 75% of the total needs for that day. It's a team effort as far as what those decisions are made. You know, it starts with the lab folks telling us what the water quality is looking like. And then it's a communication from that down to the operators, down to maintenance staff. We all work together to make those decisions as to where the best water is at any given time. One of the big undertakings that we have to help protect the water supply here is an active forest management program. Cane Creek Reservoir is 540 acres of surface area, but it's about another 2,500 acres of land that Owasa owns in the watershed, and most of that was bought you know, for watershed protection. We also own at least 50 feet all the way around the entire shoreline. The forest acts as an extra filter. The more undeveloped land that we have in and around and adjacent to the reservoir will only help to ensure that the water that makes it to the reservoir is as healthy as possible. We have about a 30 square mile watershed here. So we have a vested interest here at both of our lakes to help ensure that those watersheds are healthy. And whether that be on land ourselves or have partners through private lands and having conservation easements put on those, it all benefits the community as a whole. We're here at the Jones Ferry Water Treatment Plant. Our responsibilities here are to treat the community's drinking water. This is our operator's control room. We have eight operators that work 24-7, day and night, to provide high quality drinking water to our community. The operators do that through routine inspections, so they'll do regular walk-arounds and put their eyes on the process, make sure everything looks normal. We also, behind me, is a SCADA system. This system monitors real-time operational information. We see water quality information, equipment information, and so they can see exactly what the plant's doing and control aspects of the plant. And then the third way is through laboratory testing. So we have taps where they can take samples from every portion of the process and run water quality analysis on that to make sure it's operating properly. The information that they see on the SCADA system is, in particular, it's water quality parameters that we're maintaining. They'll be able to make sure that it's within a certain range, and if it's not within that range, they can actually make adjustments here on the computer system to either increase or decrease the chemical that we might be using to maintain that water quality parameter. It takes constant work from the operators to monitor the performance of the system. If there's anything that ever goes wrong, we want somebody to be here so that they can make those adjustments. This is not something that somebody could do remotely. Not only are they looking at the treatment process, they're looking at our distribution system. Say we have a line break in the system, they can typically see that from here because we'll see changes in our tank levels. So them being able to see that allows them to call somebody that they can start investigating and correct that issue. So when our system experiences line breaks, there are certain situations where contamination could make it into the pipe. So for those situations, we do water quality testing, and those uh, samples actually come back to this facility, and they'll do bacteriological testing on those. Uh, while we wait on those results, we issue a bull water advisory. So as a precaution, we ask them to boil their water until we confirm that the water is safe for them to drink. Partnership for Safe Water is a program that was developed to help water utilities improve the quality of the water that they're providing, as well as optimize their treatment operations. It's a voluntary program, and it's certainly above the expectations of state and federal regulations. Awasa and the Jones Ferry Water Treatment Plant have been a part of the program for over 20 years now. 
The Jones Ferry Water Treatment Plant is proud to have the highest level of award, they call it Phase 4, Excellence in Water Treatment. We got that back in 2011, so we've maintained that for 11 years now. We hope that our customers, one, it helps them feel confident that the water that we're providing is high quality and it's an investment into our mission. Here at the water plant, we do both regulatory and non-regulatory testing to ensure that the water is safe and aesthetically pleasing. We also do field work in the distribution system to ensure the water quality is safe around town. We want to see the results on the raw water because we need to see what kind of chemical levels and make treatment decisions based off of that. But we do a lot more testing on the treated water because that's the product that we're putting out into the system. We want to make sure that's what's safe and um, pleasing for the customers to consume. We send samples out to contract labs to test for volatile organics, synthetic organics, inorganics, among other things. We perform tests in the lab as well on the finished water, and there's a whole variety of tests that we perform on that. With our population, we have to collect 90 samples per month. We have to do weekly MRT sampling, which is maximum residence time. Those sample sites are where the water sits for the longest. You want to make sure that the water that's sitting more is still good water quality for the customers. The rest of the sampling is all around town. We try to hit every part of town to make sure we know the water quality is good for every customer. The biology of the reservoirs is very complicated, but it, what it boils down to is when the temperature gets higher, the algae increase. So warmer months mean you've got to keep a closer eye on those taste and odor compounds, on those algal toxins. You do see a spike in those warmer months and that's when we're wanting to monitor the amount of taste and odor compounds in the raw water and then make treatment changes like bumping up our carbon or our permanganate to combat that so it's not popping up in the finished water. That's a very important health concern to stay on top of. It's not required, but we make sure to do that testing because it's so important. PFAS is part of a group of chemicals that are perfluorinated compounds. And these come from industrial processes and stuff like nonstick cookware and stuff like that we use every day in our households. While it's not regulatory, we do want to stay on top of it. What are we seeing in the reservoirs? What are we seeing in our finished water? There are no limits on it right now, but basically we just want to keep it as low as possible and see if there are any sort of treatment changes we can make to decrease these if we start seeing one pop up. There's a lot that's not known about PFAS and how it's treated, and that's part of why we're monitoring now. The testing that I'm doing is important to make sure that everybody consuming the water is safe. You know, it's important work and I'm very proud to do it. You kind of take it for granted that, you know, you turn on the water and it's there. I flush the, the toilet and it goes away. I mean, there's so much work that goes into making sure that, you know, we're providing high quality drinking water. And on the other side of what we do is that we're safely treating the used water and uh, returning that back to the environment better than we found it.